Mondays and Tuesdays, my wife Cheryl takes care of the grandkids. Wednesdays, when I get up, I usually get on the computer, take a look at the DASBO Facebook page, uh, do eBay. I'll go early in the morning to the grocery store because, well, there isn't any people there. Cheryl thinks I'm using Instacart. Hi, my name's John Gentry, and uh, I believe you're selling one of my photos uh, from Vietnam on your eBay store. Okay. If you took that photo in Vietnam, was it published in a public, in like a newspaper or something? That's the only way they would have gotten a hold of it. Okay. Um, then you'll need to wait for Miss Williams to return your call. And also, I see that you're selling uh, images of my brother George. So um, I can I can transfer you to one other person. Um, if you don't get that person again, leave a voicemail, and they'll Either call you back. We need to have a discount, or we need to come to some sort of an agreement. Hypertension, 10%. Respiratory condition, 6%. Cancer, less than 1%. Heart trouble, 2%. Stroke, less than 1%. Kidney problems, diabetes, less than 1%. Liver disorders, disorders, less than 1%. Nerve disorders, disorders, joint disorders, hearing problems, mental or emotional problems. So that's what I see at the center of the story. Okay. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the uh, 9-11 first responders. Talk. I did. Very good work. Um, yeah, I love this concept. It feels like a very American tale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that that really has legs. I think what you have here is an egg, you know. It feels like this could hatch to be something really interesting. Mm-hmm. What is the story? What is the centerpiece? In lieu of an actual, their actual father who is, who knows, likely, you know, a state away from them, they instead are growing up with the stepfather, you could say the evil stepfather of the American government trying to hide its sins from the Vietnam War. And they are trying to trace that back. I think that's the real story. Take me through... uh what that what that entails what what's the oh we've got all of the theory laid out all of the r and d laid out um I have contacts with uh you may be interested by this uh the official u s military epidemiologist that was running a twin study during the Vietnam War you know total conflict of interest possibility here, but I don't think it'll be a big problem in the long run is that I was on the committee for scholarship selection and i I can defend to the cows come home, they validly earn their scholarship. But then we discuss collaborating after their admission to Stanford, where I was on the board, and here we are. I love to ask uh, filmmakers this, but do, how do you envision the first five minutes of this film playing mm-hmm. out? I want you to be standing up from your chair, flipping your chair over and then throwing it out the window and just gluing your face to the screen. That's what I want. I want to confuse the hell out of you. Thank you. 
You're probably wondering how we found you. Through the power of Google and the Freedom of Information Act, we found it you. It took us a year to find the P.O. box of your brother, John. We mailed him three times. He didn't answer any of our questions. But he sent our family an Easter card this year. Mom, our real mom, would be upset. Whether you care or not, I'm writing to share good news. We've been accepted to the universities of our choice and will be in roles next year. Your daughters will be Stanford Cardinals on a scholarship. It's going to be the first time living in separate rooms. Not much else to say. If you're willing, maybe someday we can meet in My person. My boyfriend's mom told us to watch The Shining because of the scene with the twins. Love always, regardless of pain, and the same. Honestly, it was hella scary, but there were a couple of times when I was falling asleep. I showed it to Emma on YouTube, and she said she would never be able to watch it because of the gore. Then just by chance that night, we watched Good Morning Vietnam with a guy from Hook, and they were identical twins in that movie too. I looked them up on the internet movie database and they were also casted in the movie Terminator. This was before we got into college, so I asked Emma about maybe getting into acting together as twins because the money could be amazing, but then we laughed because we would never move to LA to do something like that. P.S. Contradicting your responses to the questionnaire taken in 1976, our uncle is 100% alive. We realize that as the days do go by, it may be hard for you to remember because of your condition. He promised to deliver this letter to you unopened. So if you're reading this, then John is alive. You even have a bed, Paul? You got a bed, right? So you at the rendezvous, Chapman? Yes, sir. I know a lot of guys that came back from Nam had shell shock, and uh, looking at the DASPO Facebook page, it's quite evident it's still bothering a few of them. But I know some of them are doing okay. Had one call me this morning and told me I needed to watch Kong Skull Island. I'm trying to take a long exposure photograph. Which is a movie from 2017, starring Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Jackson, you. Brie Larson. Royal Air Force? My father's. He threw it to me from the train as he rolled off to fight the Nazis. He was like John Wayne to me. Did he come back? I suppose no man comes home from war. Not really. don't realize how powerful. See, I can't cross that line and make a claim, but I'll tell you. The power of lemon and lime is not in the juice. It's in what you don't eat. Wow. All right? It's right. in the skin, in the peel. And that's the key, Gary. I've realized that you have to make it extremely easy. That's why people go for a cup of coffee or they go for a donut or whatever, because they don't have the time. When I went home after my second tour, I went back to my folks place just outside of Sioux City, Iowa. My brother George was there and uh, ended up taking a photo of a of a bird which was kind of interesting because you know the the nest was one thing. Shortly after this I decided I would quit taking photos and work in an office with printing
you know, when you look at a photo, it doesn't really give justice to what actually happened. Number one, when it went off, you could, you know, you could feel it, uh, the smoke, you could smell the smoke. My twin brother was in the Signal Corps, and we were separated from each other immediately, and that was kind of tough, not knowing what he was involved in. No electricity. We had to go back to the tents to write our captions for what we had taken because we had to send it to the Pentagon and they needed to know what the pictures were that we took. So what we ended up doing is taking our bug spray and pouring it into our peanut butter ration cans and lighting it on fire to give us some light, which lasted about 45 minutes. All the pictures that we took were classified. It wasn't until later that you know I did finally see one that I took when I was with Getty Images, and it was uh, of the actor John Wayne. I think actually he came to do research because he did make the movie Green Berets. During the first half of my tour, I got a letter from George to inform me that he was uh, being discharged. Number one, I knew he was still alive. He's there with a, another Daspo photographer. We hear the, you know, the bullets whizzing by us, and I looked over at him, and his clothing was you know, shredded at his shoulder where he had been hit by it. When we landed, they started refueling it, and one of the mechanics motioned over to me to come back to the helicopter. And, and going over there, there was a uh, bird's nest in the engine. And looking below it, the one egg had fallen out and broken, but there was still an egg there in the, in the nest. So me and another guy decided that we'd take the nest out, take it back to our service building where we were staying, and put it on the roof. We felt if we had left it on the engine, we were going up back and forth. There was no chance that the bird would ever find it again there. So we just thought we might put it somewhere where it might be found, but who knows. It was 96 when Getty took over photo discs, and they had about 60,000 images. My experience was uh, chemical pictures, not digital pictures. So it was kind of a step up working with the archive stuff. And it was a good change, but it was uh, very clean and somewhat sterile. One day, when I arrived at Getty, there was a package outside my door addressed to me, which is unusual. It was a roughed up bow pelican case, black. It looked like the thing might have been mislabeled, so I brought it in, opened it up, and there was uh, two Toshiba hard drives, uh, identical. My co-worker actually uh, ingested all the footage on the first drive. The second one was, I guess, dead on arrival. Couldn't do anything with it. We played it a lot in the, the video room and it was just kind of like background, like elevator music. 
was amazing to see the two hummingbirds hatch. But it was very long, looked like it was about 40 hours. Skip and I were watching this in 2006, and that's when HD first came out. I actually saw this maybe as a sign that I should retire. You know, we don't typically, like I said, invest early, early on, but mm -hmm. what what would you be looking for from us? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit more about the process, and then maybe that actually answers the question Great. for you. What if we could raise production value even higher and drop the cost even lower? What I'm talking about is these little tiny action sports cameras. Have you seen these, mm -hmm. uh, GoPros? Mm -hmm. I wanna shoot some first person yeah. scenes with the girls having GoPros on themselves as they go into these government offices, as they talk to their family about who was our father, as they wrestle with what was the war and the legacy of the war on us. I want to have them engage in some of these interesting like hypnotherapy sessions where they do automatic poetry writing and try to you know extract that kind of Jungian truth out of them. I want to do some kind of contact mic audio work where we record from their carpet and get the kind of sense of their emotion through the way they walk on their floors. I want a multi-track audio with an old tape recorder, Tascam, so that we can actually have kind of evocative emotions live from different lavalier mics as we're going. That's what I'm talking about, throw that chair out the window. Mm -hmm. And no one plays with this in nonfiction, as you know, because you're so strapped to the one, two camera, it, talking head archival setup, and you're doing it on a shoestring. Hmm. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I think there's room for a lot of that. Um, I just fear that relying uh, too heavily on, on this sort of low res um, stuff can be off-putting you know, these handheld cameras sure. and, and home footage. I, I guess I would love to see something a little more um, big, you know, a little mm -hmm. more glossy. I don't want to say that like inside the office that avant-garde is a dirty word, uh, but what uh, do you think you could, you could sort of in your terms define avant-garde? Sure. Um, I can define it or, or I can communicate it. I think I'll just communicate. When I'm saying avant-garde, I'm saying the surprise of seeing that dinosaur in Jurassic Park for the first time, but in documentary. Hello. Hey, John. Uh, this is Skip. We used to work together on the third floor of the archives. Not sure if you remember. Yes, me or not. yes, Skip. Great. So, kind of out of left field, but do you happen to remember that hummingbird footage? You mean the Toshiba hummingbird? Exactly. The little Toshiba drives from 15 years ago. So because of the new policy here, we had to transfer everything to LTO tapes. And the guy that replaced you sent the broken Toshiba to Hardware Forensics. Okay. And we got that footage off the broken drive. Say again? I found him. His name is Ban Sun Ti. And I will give him to you. When? One week from tonight.
do you feel like uh, with the footage you have that you have that hook right now? Do you have that thing to, to pull us into the world? I think we're right on the cusp, really. One of his friends told me about a place where he thought he might be. I might bring him home, time to bring him home to live with us for a while so that we could get him back on the straight and narrow. So I don't know why he left the the, uh, why he left the center. My heart is still whole, broken in half. My half, we are whole. We'll stay together and grow until fully grown. Dear George, a.k.a. Dad, Enclosed is a poem that I wrote when I was 12 years old. We're 19 now. George, it's your brother. George. Come on. Why'd you leave the center? Talk to the woman there. She said you left two weeks ago. The center was good for you. On my way here, lost my balance, fell, climbed up the hill, hit my fucking head, and you, and you ignore me. Don't be so bullheaded. We want to take risks. We just don't um, necessarily want to uh, create 
an opportunity or a circumstance where we fail instantly. Mm -hmm. Sure. We don't, we don't want to drop people off the edge of the world and, and leave them. I'm, I know I'm coming off as, you know, the Stanford academic guy that doesn't even want to tell a story but says he's a storyteller. That's not who I am. I love a good story. But when we say in the industry or in, you know, the ivory tower of academia like Stanford is um, to, that we're going to tell someone else's story, it makes my skin crawl. I know we can sell stories. You know we can sell stories. You have sold great stories and you have told great stories. But no matter how many dollars we put behind it or how many degrees we put behind it, we would be not telling their story. We would be casting them to act in a story that we write. And I don't think you want to play that role. Right. You, you, yeah. you want to see something real. And, yeah. and we do too. I mean... If I can be perfectly honest, what we're missing is, is, is something uh, a little more cement, something physical, like just a sizzle or... Something physical. Um, I'm right here with you, Derek. Right. The registry is comprised of 10,981 male twins who responded to the survey. 68 have been married once and 21% have been married two or more times. The average number of children fathered by members of the registry is two. And what we do uh, in the industry is different than what they do in academia because we don't have the time. You know, we've got to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. We've only had a century, right, of time. Right. Yeah. And uh, no one's had the time for a hundred years to take this risk. And you don't want to be the first, I get it. We, well, we love taking risks. We love taking risks. It's I'm just willing to play ball. Because I know this is a non-traditional ask. I'm surprised I'm even in here for me. I honestly don't understand why I'm here. I've got these tools. You have the resources. It's visible. Right. I see a match here, um, but I don't feel, it, something feels unstable here. Mm. I think largely this is why we, we tend to take things on that we already feel has that story. That's the, the thing. Is That's the thing. Not, uh, Sorry to interrupt. No, no, we don't know what the story is because no one tells this story. 